Hi everyone and welcome in this new video. Today I'm going to show you how to extend the Flow2 template with regards to Cubase and Vienna Ensemble Pro. In the next video I will show you how to integrate that with the application Flow Plus and how to generate the configuration files that are needed in that application. For this video I'm going to show you how to add some libraries using the Spitfire Abey Road 1. Ok, so let's start. The very first things to do is to start working on Vienna. The very first things to decide is where the library should be. As you can see, Flow comes with a certain uh, list of instances, which I highly recommend you not to uh, edit, not to uh, modify, because then uh, otherwise you might have problems when there is an upgrade. So whatever you want to add, some new library of, on your own, just create a new instance. For these specific libraries, I will probably also create just a new instance because it makes more sense, it's, a, it's an orchestral on its own and Spitfire Audio has uh, some plans to upgrade it in the future so it makes sense that I just create a new one. The code for this one will be Spitfire AB Road 1, so this one. So I'm going to put the color which is typically the color of the orchestral libraries which contains uh, all the type of instruments. And now what we are going to do here is I'm going to create a few tracks. So in this video I'm just doing two of them, not all. So first of all I'm going to add one and two here. And I'm going to set those to output oh, one, two and output Three, four. So now we are going to load here Spitfire Audio. Here it is. And we are going to put in the first one, so the main one, which is the orchestra. So load it. So I'm going to put here the name. And I'm going to make sure that here it's assigned to uh, one one. So then I look at this. Typically that's to be set, so one. All right. Second one, I'm going to add Okay, so now I'm going to add the high strings. So click it, load it. And then we are going to put it on the channel 2. Make sure that you also here put the channel 2. And uh, here we are going to put the name. That was very simple. Uh, it will be almost the same things. Uh, if you use, for example, a contact, insta a contact library instead, you will just add a contact instance here and you will add all the necessary instruments inside that contact instance. So now that we have set up our channels, we have loaded the plugin inside, we have set up the right input, we have make sure that inside the, uh, the, the, the plugin you have the same MIDI channel and that you have set up the right output. So in that case, it's a different one for each of them. What we need to do is to add some MIDI automation. So you go in the automation pane here, automation mapping, which is already there, and you add two of them. This is uh, being used by Flow Plus to enable and disable the track. It's simply a CC under 25 control change, which depending if it sends one or minus one, it will enable or disable the track. So simply go there and say on the one, channel one, Control, controller 125 and this will control the first track disable and then for the second one channel 2 in that case 125 again and this time it's for this one disable so now we will also be able to control from flow plus and being able to uh, un uh, unload it and load it that's all there is nothing more that has to be done here of course, to make it better, I will al I always add folders, so like that. 
and I put them we can put them under that folder so it will be easier to voila it will be easier to manage As you can see there, each of these has a certain amount of articulations, has a certain amount of microphones and faders. So this is uh, something that then we will manage when we will set up Flow Plus. Once you are done with it, you can now save and everything is done. And so now we can go back to Cubase. In Cubase here, we need to decide where uh, this has to be added. Uh, so let's use, let's go to flow plus here. We say that, so the first one, it was an orchestra and it was mainly uh, this one, orchestra tutti. So we could just show this one here. Here is where we want to put the first track. When you create a new track here in Cubase, just make sure that you always start by duplicating an existing one. And one, after you duplicate it, the only things you need to do is to change the name. Orchestra. And remove the expression map, which then you will need to add it again. And so that's it. So you, are, you already have the same name of the folder. You have the name of the library here. You have the name of the track. You have the MIDI sense, which are, have been inherited by the other ones once you copy. And then the one thing that you will still need to do is to change this parameter in the MIDI sense one of the transformer, which is actually what identifies this track towards Flow Plus. But for this one, we will see these uh, things to do in the next video. Now that we have created this track, we need to uh, connect it to our output. So in that case, we decided to create a new rack. And what we are going to do here then is go there and create a new rack. And here we choose the Vienna Ensemble Pro. I don't need to create a MIDI track. And then you need to connect it, of course. So you click here and you do connect. So now it's connected and typically it's at the bottom here. And then what you also do is that you just put the name so that you can easily identify it. Now that we did that, so we can go here, we can say, voila, it was on the MIDI one, MIDI in one, on the port, on the channel, sorry, one. And here it is, it's connected. So now we need to enable the output. In that case, we, at this moment, we have only the one, two and three, four. So we are going to enable those two. And as you can see, they will appear here. How, okay, let me show you how to see that better. You go in the mixer, there. You go to the VST instruments, where there is one for each of the rack. And you can finally see that you have your new one, which is called here, Saro. Uh, and then you have the two outputs, where we know that the one, two, okay, let me just disable everything else so that we have only this. So the one, two, we knew that it was the orchestra. So we put the name here and the three and four, it was the strings high. All right. Now, based on the grouping that it's already implemented here in flow two, you will see that you have groups called strings high, strings low, uh, actually all the different sections. And then you have the uh, the final one with the strings and the choir. So what you can do here is that you need to first take this one and you need to root to the right group. In that case, for this one is the full orchestra. For the second one is the strings high. Voila, and you are done. And now you can see that when you go, so your strings high will play, will go into the group strings high which is here. The group strings high will go inside the group strings, which is here, which then it's go is going to the to all, which then is going to the, uh, to the final output. So now we can make a try and 
we can start to play this one. Voila, it works. And then if we go in the mixer, you can see, so from the orchestra, it goes to the orchestra there, and then it goes to the old. And voila. So everything is fine, everything is set. So that was super simple. Uh, let's, let's do the next one, and then we will do the expression map. So the next one was strings high. So in that case, we are going to put that one inside strings high. So let's go to flow plus and show only the string ensemble high. And let's of course open it. Okay, so we are going to put it here. Let's duplicate this track. Let's change the name. Let's put it in alphabetical order, like that. So let's remove the expression map, which is not the right one to avoid actually mistakes. And let's do the routing to the right one, MIDI in one, channel two. All right, if now we play and we go to the mixer view, you will see that there is sound coming from this one, the strings high, which goes to strings high, which where actually all the strings high instruments of the template are rooted, which then goes to strings, goes to all, and then to the output. Now that we did that, the remaining thing, the last remaining things that we are going to do in this video is setting the expression maps. So let's start by showing those two folders. So we already have here the strings ensemble and then this one we also add this one here all right so we have this so let's put it also this one in alphabetical order voila we have the two tracks one and two and now we need to create the expression maps for all of them so to do that i'm going to put the two windows one close to the other Okay, to create expression map, so you go here in the orchestra, you click there, you click on expression map setup. So what you do is that you create a new one, which will be added at the end. You put the same name of the track. And here you have one, two, three, four, five expression maps. So you create five slots and you put number one, two, three, four and five. This is the number of the program change that will be sent by flow. So, and then we go with like, the first one is long, the second one is staccato, the third one is swells short, fourth one swells medium, fifth one swells long and then we see okay we add the art custom articulation there this one is called long and this a direction staccato we add a new one attribute and then we add those ones here so we do direction And the last one. Direction two. Okay, and finally, the last things to do is to write the key switch that will trigger the change of the articulation. As you can see here in the plugin, it says that long is assigned to C minus one, staccato to C sharp minus one. Although I found that there is something strange with this Pitfire plugin, because here when it says C minus one, is the root, is the initial note, which in Cubase correspond to C minus two. So in that case, actually, if when you create that one here, you will have to create C minus two. It's quite strange, but that's how it works. C sharp minus two. And then here you say D minus two. And then again, D sharp minus two. And this one, it will be 
e minus 2. So now we have all set up. As you can see, they were just a consequence. So v and e, all right. And we close it and we assign it. It's at the bottom. And now that we are sure that we have created our expression map and that we have assigned it, we can test it. So just by creating a new empty track, just recording some random notes. All right. And with those random notes, we are going to test the switching of the articulations. Voila, it's like that. And now you can see that when you hit play button, those articulation will actually switch. All right. Okay, it doesn't sound very good, but it's the sound of something which is working. And that's okay. So maybe the last things for this video here is, the, is a, a small explanation about the MIDI sense here. This one, this MIDI sense is what actually says to uh, Flow Plus which track this uh, is, is. In that case, you will see uh, that wherever it receives a trigger from Flow Plus, it will reply with a specific uh, number. It says I am uh, value one zero, value two zero uh, in the channel one. So what I do suggest is that when you create your own uh, instances, put this MIDI sense here to uh, something like the farthest away from one, like for example, the 16 and start from here. Uh, and you will already have plenty of space because in flow, I'm going to start from one and extend with the one, the two, the three, the four and the five and use those ones. So this will avoid to have conflict between, between uh, the development of flow and your ones. And then you will just need to decide uh, wha how this, uh, to which poly pressure value this will be mapped. And then you will see in the next video how this is translated in Flow Plus into a specific uh, element. Say that we have done everything we had to do. So again, just to make a recap, we have created it in Vienna. Uh, in that case, we create a new, new instance, as I said before, just create your own instances and do not use the one of flow. Inside this one, we have create cha created different channels. In each channel, we have loaded the plugin. We made sure to set up the right MIDI channel here that corresponds to the one inside with the plugin. We have created automation mapping here to be able to enable and disable. Then in Cubase, we have eventually loaded the rack or maybe you might be using one that is already there. We have created the tracks in Cubase by uh, doing a duplicate of existing ones where we have uh, redone the routing and where we have recreated and loaded the new expression map. All right, that's all for this video. I hope that it was clear. As you can see, the process of uh, extending Vienna and Cubase, it's very uh, straightforward. And I will give you more details about extending Flow Plus in the next video, but especially in the documentation of my website, because there will be a lot of text and documents that you will have to read. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one.